around 5-6% globally that India is uh, in, uh, in the total sector. 5-6% of the yeah. total go yeah. global turnover? Yeah. I see. Okay. Now, uh, when you make products specifically for India, how different is Indian customer in relation to others in this in the region? When, when it comes to, uh, you have always local standards, you have Indian standards. So these products are according to Indian standards. So that is where they can, they can, because always the Indian standard is not always deviated from the global standard, but they can deviate from that part. But when it comes to the efficiency requirements, when it comes to the safety requirements, when it comes to the quality requirements, they're as as high as uh, you can find in the US or in Europe or anywhere in, in the world. Okay. And uh, uh, the other part is that, you know, uh, uh, Giovanni, is that, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm yes, not sure I'm saying it correctly. Uh, you are from Italy. Yes. How, can, how, does, how do products made in India get exported to, uh, uh, to Europe? Or any other part of that part, that part of the world, and how does it suit your your your? Well, actually, uh, we have products that are exported in uh, USA, mm -hmm. and uh, those products meets the requirement of USA. That means that uh, quality and technology is at the standard of the USA. Then we have a lot of products today that are uh, exported in the Middle East market. You know. And uh, in Europe, I think there are not many products that we are uh, exporting in Europe. Okay. You know, and uh, referring to the to the question that you have asked before, you know, we have uh, products for the Indian markets, but we also have a double offer. You know, so if the customer they want uh, a more sophisticated uh, uh, equipment, you know, we have the double offer coming from uh, from Europe or uh, or uh, where else. Uh, when we go to the construction products, mm -hmm. you know, there are, um, let's talk about the jump boy, for instance, for the tunnel, you know, there are some uh, software or high technology, you know, which are not suitable for the Indian market. Also because the operator, they don't have that level of uh, uh, knowledge, you know, in order to, to run these products. You know. So we adapt to the real exigence of the local market. You know, and the, also, there is another part of it, uh, uh, you know, probably Amit could talk, talk to us about it. Uh, India itself represents several markets because of its temperature, because yeah. of its weather conditions. Yeah. So, does that mean that if you have products in India made for various regions, you know, that can actually be uh, also be used for similar situations abroad? Of course. Like, for example, uh, you know, the Middle East, the African uh, market, the conditions of the temperature, when it comes for the temperature or when it comes for the operating conditions, the operators there are uh, many a times moved from India also. Mm -hmm. So they would like to interact with the machine uh, which is very simple to understand, very simple to understand and uh, you know very easy to operate. So the, these machines which are designed for Indian conditions also meet the conditions which are similar to these countries. And that is where in the portable uh, compressor division we are able to export these machines and they are very well accepted in these markets. I see. Frederick, you are general manager of this company. Now, we also know that Europe is a tough market, especially because the standards are very high. The standards set by the buyers as well as the governments there are very high. So in that situation, how do uh, you, you, do you find it a challenge to source uh, your material and your products from India? In fact, uh, I was running an operation in France before to come here and I was sourcing a lot of my components already from India. So as we were saying that uh, our quality standard is able to reach American standard is also true for our parts and we already buy quite a lot from here. I see. Okay, now in, when it comes to uh, you know the Make in India proposition which the industry seems to be quite excited about. How difficult, you know, I, I'm sure, you know, uh, both of you can reply to this. How have things changed? Have things changed in the last uh, two years since the government launched the Make in India, uh, pro I mean, the, the idea of bringing more and more FDI into India? Yeah, maybe I can, I can, I, can uh, I think, because I, I yes, 
uh, I think also by by giving this uh, importance to the making in uh, making India is to get the focus uh, focus not only from us mm -hmm. uh, because okay we knew already long uh, we make in India already say 30 40 years and even longer okay uh, but also I think uh, other people in in India see that and that I think is for me too first I think it's very important for India as a country you can export but second also for us because we are a capex driven company true so if companies are investing in India for making cars making airplanes making locomotives making whatever boats mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. mobile phones you need compressed air, you need tools, you need vacuum, you need any any of our product. So for us it's a double win. Yeah. So has, but uh, have things changed in the last two years? I think when we look to our sales figures, for sure. Yes. Huh? So at the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding, they say. Huh? Yes. The proof is in the invoicing, <laughs> in, in the, and that's for sure. I think we see really that uh, we, we have experienced very strong growth. Okay. Now, in, the, in terms of uh, uh, construction, especially in terms of road construction, airports, SEZs, uh, townships, in all those uh, areas, how have been, how have your products uh, been selling in India and what are the challenges there? Maybe you can thank you. Yeah. Uh, see, these construction segment, uh, as of now, even if you take two years back or now, mm -hmm. the acceptance of Atoscopco as a brand as and the products are very well, you know, and some very high. But at the same time, the uh, uh, demand for uh, uh, further improved technology, further improved quality is also there from the customer side. So we have been able to tackle that by, uh, you know, giving innovative products. We are uh, you know, reviving our uh, technology. We are Can you give us an design. example of what kind of innovative products are available like for example, for, uh, you know, for the construction side, if you talk about, like for example, the uh, water well drilling market in India, uh, it's it's growing from last two years, or from uh, last one year or rather. And uh, our products uh, are sustainable in terms of uh, better resale value to the customer. Mm -hmm. And uh, because our products are uh, durable and uh, very efficient in terms of performance, the acceptance has grown very much, uh, especially for the uh, large water well drilling. And that is uh, where we have seen a in tremendous growth in terms of uh, the acceptance from the customer side. But, but on your hand, if you take it, this is the direct. Yes, direct. But you see, but yes. indirect, what you see, mm -hmm. because when you when you go to build uh, new houses, new hotels, new uh, bridges, I think they also need other material. Yeah, uh, it's not only bricks. Very it's Not only uh, cement. You need other material, and these other materials is like coming back to my previous stance when it comes to expansion. Okay. This is where our products place even more in the supply chain. And that can go from mining, right, because you need to drill for yes. copper, for iron ore and whatever. Uh, and you also need to convert them. There you need compressors, vacuum, and you need to assemble there you need the tools. So that is where we see, and that makes us growing. Yes, in, we, are, in we are covering the entire thing actually. Yeah. Yeah. Ronnie, uh, this particular plant, your expansion in Hyderabad, I guess, uh, is uh, actually it's basically taking uh, the plant from Sweden to India. Now, in terms of uh, having a production production unit in India, uh, what do you think would be the potential for exports? How much are the exports today, and what could be the potential for exports uh, in the next in the midterm and the long term? So first I would say, before we expand in, in either of we also had a, already a very good functional uh, existing. factory, an existing one, right. because that is the, it was a very good base. Huh? So the receiving entity was very strong already. So we are now going almost to double the size. Okay. And why are we doubling the size? Because first it's, we see it's very competitive, so we see the growth potential also for export. Uh, and also we are doing certain 
manufacturing consolidation, mm -hmm. where we have on one hand consolidation in Sweden, because we will have some products going to Sweden, but then we need space in Sweden, and these products going then either to US or to India. Okay. So that is actually happening today, and that's one of the reasons why we need to have a very efficient hydrofat plant. In total, we are exporting, total atmoscopical, we are exporting around 15% of our total uh, revenue we export exporting outside yeah, today. Okay. And how, what will be your mid-term and three years and long-term export projections? I think, uh, on one hand, uh, it's very difficult to answer that. And why is it difficult? Because I really push hard that the Indian market is growing very fast. And if that goes very faster than the export market, yeah, then maybe my 15% remains a 15, but my pie, pie chart becomes bigger. Right. Absolutely. So that is the real, uh, what I really hope is that both are growing very fast, because at the end of the day, we live from the absolute and not from the percent. Okay, I'll keep my promise of 10 minutes. Uh, the, po uh, the last question which I have is that uh, our viewers as well as our magazine readers are basically from construction industry. So we would like to know, essentially, you know, I'm referring to all those emails that we get. Uh, how can India improve on sourcing from India or production in India, you being a print, you know, having uh, production units across the world? How can India improve? And uh, in terms of also logistics and automation, which are usually considered the disadvantages in India. So in those relations, in relation to construction industry, what would be one by one? Let's start from uh, here. Actually, you know, the, uh, one of the reasons that we are producing in India, everybody knows is that you know, the labor is uh, still low. You know, and, uh, with a lot of training, we, we are able to have our people get into the same quality of products that we get all over, all over the world. You know? So the automation is not something that is so challenging in, uh, in India. You know? And uh, for the rest, I don't know if you want to add something. Yes. Yeah, I think what, what uh, is I think in, important in, um, in us is, of course, if we, get, if we get better in India when it comes to the total supply chain, mm -hmm. that will make India more competitive. So what do you expect there? Is it about warehousing or is it about roads? Is it about let, let's what start, part of let's, let's start first on, uh, say, traffic on the roads. Huh? Because a lorry is also a traffic, Absolutely. and you need to go from plan from A to B. You need to move people. It is also about people, because people sitting in the car are not contributing to the society. Absolutely. So that is an area. If we can release that hidden um, resource of the capacity, I'm sure India will have a great future. And uh, can you also tell us about automation? What are the challenges? Yeah, I think uh, on automation, um, I think that's important first. I think we need to do further automation. When we talk about Industry 4.0, I think it's important that we also are getting a taste from that. Mm -hmm. Because it goes quick and we need to develop. Because uh, automation also gives uh, a big advantage in quality. Mm -hmm. Because the repetitive of the quality is higher when you automate when you do it with a human being. So that is an area where I think we all in India need to really give attention to that. It's an area where we all Indians need to give an attention to. I would uh, entirely agree with you as much as your counterpart in India. Thank you all so much for being with us. Thank you very much.